In Meduguri, there is a very popular tree. It's called the Nim tree. If you are a Samis or a minstrel, there are consecrations attached to it. If you break it, you have messed yourself up. You will still be singing, but in the spirit, the mic has been taken from your mouth. If God has called you to do ministry in this land and you are not doing it, you are either on your way into trouble or you are already in trouble. You see these trees, spiritually, they signify how anybody that must live in this town must try. You want distinction to your sound, then you must understand that it has happens from your secret you must be like a nim tree your root must go down the strength of my ministry as a keyboardist will be in my interaction with this angelic order because you think that because you are playing instrument does not make you spiritual you you fool yourself oh. secular music is more spiritual and deep than you think before these guys wax their songs you don't know the gods that they send their songs to you don't know the rituals that they do how else do you think somebody will just come out there's one guy in this country one of the dance he released they call it Boga. every song that that guy released came with a dance step and everyone went viral there's nothing natural about it it's not about how long we rehearse it's about how deep we are and this is a code for every music minister that the strength of our worship is in our priesthood. The greatest victory in the spirit, I tell you this from the experience of work I have with God, the greatest victory in the spirit are always manifested through the smallest signs. The smallest sign. At the seventh time, he came back and said, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. That's almost insignificant, but that was the cloud that brought rain. Most times when you don't feel it, that's when it has happened. As a matter of fact, when you feel it, maybe it doesn't move God. Because you are trying to pick it in the flesh. But we walk by faith, not by sight. Most of the times when you don't feel it, that's when it really moved God. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Just pray in the spirit where you are. God is giving someone victory tonight. God is giving someone victory tonight. giving us victory tonight hear me when we pray we fight but when we praise he fights the Lord shall fight for you and you will hold your peace most of us are used to fighting it's time for you to see God in action it's time for you to come to a place of rest and see God fight did he not say for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways they shall bear you up in their hands so that you won't even kick a stone talk more of hit a demon let God do the fighting Acts chapter 16 verse 25 to 26 the story of Paul and Silas in prison beaten wounded and battered the Bible says that they were chained hand and foot and they were kept in the underground cell. But the mistake that was made was their mouths were not chained. <laughs> they, they chained everything and left their mouth. Unfortunately for the devil, that is always the secret to victory. For the righteousness of faith speaks in this wise. It says, for who shall say? That we will go to heaven and get the world or down to Hades. He said, for what sayest thou? That the word is in near you, even in your mouth that you should speak. And the Bible says that Paul and Silas at midnight began to pray and to praise God. And all of a sudden there was a shaking. There was a shaking. Regardless of their pain, regardless of their trauma, they were traumatized most times when we should be licking our wounds as the enemy wants us to that's when you should break forth into praise someone say but apostle there's nothing to praise about I, I have to feel like to praise i have to feel like to dance that may be true naturally but you see when you don't feel like it 
and you still praise that's what the bible calls the sacrifice of praise hebrews 13 15 by him therefore let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise which is the fruit of our lips giving confession to his name the fruit of your lips are your words the bible says a man's belly shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth the devil can keep everything around your life in chains except your mouth and it is that mouth that gives you victory it is that mouth that brings you from pain into pleasure it takes you out of a pit into a high place the bible says they began to sing and to pray and all of a sudden the foundations of the prison was shaking you know it is powerful not only when we combine together but when we combine the art of praise and prayer you see this is the double-edged sword praise and prayer worship and warfare one man that understood this formula was David and that's the song that do sing son that my worship is my weapon and this is how I win my battle how by praising by praising if we understand the formula of prayer and praise and if we understand what the Bible calls the sacrifice of praise is a mystery sometimes it can be in your words sometimes it can be in your dance sometimes it can be in daily thanksgiving and confession of his name as long as you keep your praise alive I guarantee you that there is no prison that is strong enough to hold you down for long they were kept in an underground cell you know what God did God went under the underground and shook the foundations it, at least God would have done what he did for Peter he simply opened the gate and Peter went out but when he was Paul and, and you know why Peter was sleeping people were praying for him but Paul and Silas began the praise and the prayer themselves God said I'm coming to the prison this time the same way the grave could not hold Jesus most times when the devil can't attack you directly he attacks around you he turns help us to become stumbling blocks he raises us ugly situations and then you are surrounded with mountain guess what i have good news for you the god that we serve the bible says he breaketh the wilderness how did he put it he causes the mountains to skip like rams and the little hills like lamb is a mountain shaker is a chain breaker is a foundation remover jesus said whatever my father in heaven has not planted shall be uprooted in second chronicles chapter 5 verse 11 to 14 this time around it was the dedication of the temple of solomon and the bible says that something happened on that day of the dedication the bible first of all said that there were priests that had sanctified themselves if you read from verse 11 the bible says all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions in other words just that verse in other words there was no regard of you are from this division, you are from this rank so you go first and after you this one because of the urgency to see the glory of god they didn't obey rank and order and division no now that gives me a picture of something that god wants to achieve in the body of christ that a time is coming and i believe we are in that time where we are not going to be bounded by denomination where we are not going to be bounded by sentiments by prejudices you know that's one of the things that threatened our unity as believers one of the greatest attack on the church is the attack on our unity why is the devil always trying to get us against one another why we must come to that point if we want to see the glory of god where we keep aside denomination we keep aside tribalism sentiments prejudice 
we keep aside everything that seems to bring us apart and then come together as one for whom God has made us to be the body of Christ many members but one body that's the first formula you see in this scripture Lord make us instrument of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase Lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall see when we are your instruments of peace now let me talk to us briefly walls of pride and prejudice god nominated us as one body we denominated ourselves god is not the author of denomination thank god that one of the advantages of denomination is it helped to preserve the move of God that came at certain seasons in the history of the church. Do you understand that? Good. But beyond denomination, God made us one. Everything that makes us fight one another is not of God, it's of the devil. We cannot achieve unity by all of us becoming one. Your brother must not look like you. If we are all uniform, we are not the body of Christ. Because the Bible says we are many members but one body. If the foot should say, I have no need of the hand, where will be the, the handling? Isn't it? And if say, if the whole body was the eye, where will be the sense of smell? God's idea of unity is unity in diversity. That we see ourselves not in a form of competition but in a form of complementation. That I'm happy and I celebrate my brother when he demonstrates what I don't have. You know why people stand during concerts? You know why people stand when the other person is ministering? So that when they are ministering to that other person will stand. You know why these days if you set up a music conference or a music seminar. Just come and let's feast on the word of God and worship. Let's grow and know God more nobody will come you know why because you didn't ask them to come and minister we are still playing with all these things when satan as impossible as it seems for the kingdom of satan but something is happening in the kingdom of darkness that there seems to be a rise of unity in the kingdom of darkness because satan was there when jesus said that satan cannot cast out satan he knows that the best way to beat these guys is to become one that's why demons move in leak. If a prince demon with a thousand other demons enters one body and another prince with one thousand comes and enters that body, they won't quarrel. As long as we keep this guy and his family and his generations bound, let's remain here. That's why legions could stay in one man. But it's impossible for the body of Christ to achieve unity. Or 6,000 demons could stay in one body, one. And they won't quarrel. And I don't, want you, I don't want you to make light of what I'm saying right now because until we get this, you just forget about what we are doing. Why fight one another? God forbid that in the whole of this land, God raises only one apostle and is the one you are looking at. God forbid god forbid before we even started this ministry i've been praying for years and i'm still praying it till yesterday that god raised many more jonathan lagangs and even greater if it's just me they will kill me at once it's easy to get the attack you just have one spot but by the time we have 500 of me it becomes the, the devil becomes depressed that's the reason why every one of us that carries certain levels of grace of God on your life you must find a way to replicate that grace 
you must find a way that others should carry what you have there's no need to be stingy about it there's no need to put a price tag on it did you receive it because of a price no the bible says that the priests did not keep their divisions they were not held by you know we see you see all kinds of things in church these days instrumentalists fighting one another many years ago when i was an instrumentalist it was happening 14 years later i'm no longer an instrumentalist. i'm still seeing so i'm wondering whether they grew or they are still the same way you know when a an adult behaves like a baby and wants to be treated like an adult that's where you have a problem you find opposition in the same choir and the funny thing is they will, they will finish speaking in tongues now and fight outside and i'm wondering what is it a joke is spirituality a joke what's going on that's why we don't find revival in our land many churches many music concerts but no move of god once these guys begin their fast the whole city will feel it they find a way to systemize it fasting to a dead god but we that have the god that is living there is no way our environment can feel the walking of the sons of god time for us to wake up all the fighting has got to end god did not make all of us the same and nobody should cry that the other person should be like him we must embrace one another we must love one another the way we are you see the best way to live with people and to work with people is i've been a leader for years now let me give you three steps to working and living with anybody number one accept them for who they are number two love them for who they are number three try to understand why they are the way they are if you practice these three you would have done the fourth one you would have influenced them the way you want yes i've been a leader for years and this is somebody's solution you are in a relationship people are not getting along but go and practice it don't try to change the other person God is not a fool when he gave you somebody who is not like you at least in secondary school you did intro tech and they taught you different types of joint isn't it even though some of you have forgotten some of you the only thing you remember is my worship is my weapon and it's good if you remember that let's go back and finish up now the bible says that they did not keep their order they were one they were united without any differences and then the bible says that in verse 13 that there were 120 priests the verse 13 now or verse 12 that there were 120 priests that blew trumpets and i read it this afternoon and the, the holy spirit was showing me something here and i want to say it before we pray that 120 priests for me verse 12 yes and with them 120 priests sounding trumpet i want you to watch something here before we pray you see one of the ways to catch a revelation from the word of god is question what you read question that's why god gave you reasoning have you heard people who say you don't use reasoning to understand the word of god it's not true you actually use reasoning only that you don't approach the scriptures to counter it or to doubt it no god said come now let us so 120 priests were blowing trumpets blowing trumpets is an act of music they were making a sound that's worship priests has to do with service in the temple offering sacrifices to god and prayer is the primary sacrifice of priesthood for a believer so that tells you the combination of priesthood and worship that means and this is a code for every music minister that the strength of our worship is in our priesthood let me say it again whether you're an instrumentalist whether you are a poet whether you are a rapper whether you are a spoken word artist whether you are a, a, a singer the strength of our ministry is in our priesthood what what makes your sound distinct 
is not in how loud it is no the soon the, the the moment you finish making that sound and go people will even forget who was there what makes your sound distinct in the ears and the hearts of people is the strength of your secret place with god the strength of your fellowship with god your priesthood let me tell you it is 80 percent of the work i'm not saying don't rehearse i'm not saying don't perfect your music skills but you can do all that and still be one amongst a thousand or one amongst ten thousands but the strength of your sound the bible says that in first corinthians 14 that in this world there are as it were many voices but none of them is without distinction you want distinction to your sound then you must understand that it happens from your secret the strength and the life of every tree is predicted by the depth of his root let me tell you something in Meduguri there is a very popular tree that many of us know it's called the Nim tree and I use it to explain something spiritual in the atmosphere that if God has called you to do ministry in this land and you're not doing it you are either on your way into trouble or you are already in trouble because I'm going to say some things before we pray do you notice that there's a prevalent spirit of death in this territory I dare you to go to the cemetery look take a sample and look at 30 tombstones I guarantee you that if you find up to five that are 70 something come back it's either I made a mistake by my research or something went wrong there's something in this territory that we are in good things don't last whether it is a restaurant whether it is a business whether it is an institution whether it is a good leader whether it is a minister whether it is a church even the one you love something seems to cut off good things in their prime and for ministers it's either they leave this town in their prime or they die now let me give you the formula to conquer that and some of you are not dead physically but you're already dead spiritually and that's why God wants to revive you here you know how I know you are dead you are struggling right now you feel it sometimes it looks like there's a force on you you seem to be under some kind of pressure or body I'm just telling you what is happening in the spirit realm there's a very peculiar tree in this territory it's called the neem tree that's the most populous tree you find around this part that's the only tree that you will always find the leaves green yes or no from january to december i studied about the neem tree and i discovered that the root system of the tree the height is twice the height of the tree on the ground so if you see a neem tree that is as tall as this building it is twice as tall in its root and so two people were discussing one day from the airport and one of them said you see these trees spiritually they signify how anybody that must live in this town must thrive you must be like a neem tree your root must go down and I see young people joke with God I just laugh you've not you've not been hit by certain things people like famo people like um, to be known I tell you my greatest battle was from the day I took up this office and as an apostle there are things we see in the secret that we can't see on the stage forget about this suit and the smile if you don't believe that there are battles we face then the results that you see again and again replicating themselves are a sign that something is going on and you know what it is in when God trains you in this kind of place that he can send you out if you don't do well yeah you can't do well in Abuja he it says because I'm not in Abuja that's why I've not waxed my album nobody will hear me a chameleon in Meduguri cannot be an alligator in Canada it's the truth he that is faithful in little is faithful in much he traded with five and got extra five he said now I give you charge of ten cities If you didn't wax it here, you will not even see the wax to wax the album in another place. So I took lessons from the, the Nim tree. 
the strength of our ministry the weight of our sound you want to go back to your churches and see the move of God you want to see God break out during praise and worship you want to begin to see strange miracles happen you want to see the power of God so strong that even unbelievers cannot deny then it's not about how long we rehearse it's about how deep we are let me tell you something this ministry especially if you are a psalmist or a minstrel there are consecrations attached to it i'm not going to condemn but let me just tell you the truth the way it is there are consecrations attached to it if you break it you have messed yourself up you'll still be singing but in the spirit the mic has been taken from your mouth you'll still be playing instrument but you will not be relevant there are consecrations if you're an instrumentalist ask yourself oh i wanted to say something let me say it anyway you know that there are instruments in heaven because all these instruments we play eh? they came from another realm all of these instruments are a technology that exists in another realm and that's the realm where angels are so if i'm called to play the keyboard it means that there are angelic beings that are according to the order of being pianists so the strength of my ministry as a keyboardist will be in my interaction with this angelic order because you think that because you are playing instrument does not make you spiritual you you fool yourself oh. let me tell you the truth there's nothing carnal about the music ministry even if you were doing secular so, secular music is more spiritual and deep than you think before these guys watch their songs before they send their songs you don't know the ceremonies that they make you don't know the gods that they send their songs to you don't know the rituals that they do how else do you think somebody will just come out there's one guy in this country i want to see him and the day i see him there's just one thing i want to ask him where do you get your songs and your dance from i won't call his name but one of the dance he released they call it boga let me tell you something every song that that guy released came with a dance step and everyone went viral there's nothing natural about it the next time i'm seeing it and if he watches this video no problem they know they don't hide it they know they will not tell you until you are ready to be serious you know there are some christians that even the devil will not use They are so unserious that even the devil will not use them it's the truth these guys are seriously diabolic if you know what i'm talking about i want to ask him where do you get these songs and this dance from don't tell me it just came from nowhere nothing just comes from nowhere no even if it came from your imagination it's a reality that escaped from another realm by faith we understand that the walls were framed not by the things which we see everything we do the strength of what we do is powered by our secret interaction with the realm of the spirit when you stand to minister you heard minister chijoke now this is a very strange grace all he needs to do is sing one song that you know and then other songs that you don't know will start coming i guarantee you go and try to write a song you will stay there for three days but then somebody is singing new songs at a spot it's not rehearsal no there's a grace i know you eat with him i know you shake hands with him and you know you know where he used to dry clean his clothes but let me tell you just as eight know the show for face grace know the show for face let me tell you in fact god takes pleasure in hiding greater graces in weaker vessels the strength the priesthood the priesthood we must return back let me not go down to the end of the scripture you know what happened the bible says as they began to sing and sound together as one that the glory of god filled the temple and the priest could not enter but i just successfully gave you the protocol first of all there was unity no segregation love amongst them and then there was priesthood whether your consecration is in prayer there are some of you eh, 
you will know that I'm telling you the truth. God has told you before now that before you go to minister anywhere, you are supposed to pray so, so, so number of hours. But you threw it away because you heard somebody say, hey, it's not about prayer and all of that. Let me tell you the truth. It's about prayer. In this ministry, we all have our different consecrations. Somebody, Minister Nathan can eat jollof rice now and go and sing and wow, it will be wonders. If I do that, I will fail. You ask God, what is the consecration for my own ministry? That's when your calling will begin to resound. That's when God will give a sound to your voice and compel people to hear you. Are you ready to pray? Good. I think I've done my work. So, when we understand the power of unified sound, when we become one in spirit, one in our heart, when we allow the love of God to penetrate us and we understand the mystery of sound, I tell you the truth, we will know when and how to unlock revivals in our territories. We will know when and how to unlock dimensions of God. Preachers are not supposed to be the ones that will introduce the dimensions of the power of God to us. No, no. They are meant to educate us on what we have discovered. It is worship leaders, psalmists, minstrels. They are the ones that discover. They are the scientists. They are the spiritual researchers. It is what you break into in this kind of meeting that as an apostle, I will go back and study what is this kind of move and then come back and teach people so that their understanding is fruitful. But it is you who breaks into it. If it's left to us, we always have formula, we have protocol, we have this one, we have that one. But God is in a hurry in these last days and is looking for voices, minstrels, people that he will land on. I don't want God to perch on your life. I want him to rest on your life. Let the dew of heaven rest on you. You are going to pray one prayer tonight and say, Lord, after tonight, let the weight of your presence rest upon me. Sit where you are in your seated position, pray. After tonight, let me collide with the weight of your spirit. Let your presence come and rest on me. I'm not just talking about the anointing. I'm talking about the very presence. We sing about it, the Shekinah. We sing about what we have not experienced. It's time for us to be the living expressions of what we sing. It's time for us to be the living expression of what we confess. It's time for us to prove with our lives the things that we profess. Da na 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 na